Welcome to the Coach and Crew Show. And finally, for the first time since their bye week, Washington does not come out on top. Welcome to the Coach and Crew Show. We're still going to cover the, the game. That was a tough pill to watch, especially in the first half and then into the second half. They gave us some teases of hopes, but between about a million and eight injuries, uh, how many times were they called offsides in the neutral zone and then just not being able to, to actually do something with the ball and four or five turnovers later, Washington fell short to arch rival Dallas. My number one takeaway was actually none of that. I was frustrated, and I know this has been a conversation for years, so I'm just recycling old conversations. Dallas fans were louder than Washington in Washington. And I know that's happened for years now because Washington doesn't sell out. But that was still disappointing to hear. Turnovers, major battle. Uh, Phil was just making the joke off air about Antonio Gibson and leading the team or league in fumbles again. That's got to stop. It's just this was not a good game overall. And then throw on many, many, many more injuries. And this is where we are. But yet we're still – in theory, in playoff running. So go figure. Devin, I'll let you go first. My initial opinion on it is I'm very disappointed in the play of the offense. The offense came out there and they couldn't do anything until the very end of the game and they still looked horrible. So that's my biggest takeaway. I don't have much else to say about that. All right, Phil. Three and a half hours of my life, I'll never get back. On top of that, I was so disappointed in the offensive line. Here we are singing their praises with this beat-up group of guys on how they've hung together and played hard for the past six or eight weeks. They were trash today. None of them should be able to look themselves in the mirror tonight. They were complete 100% garbage. And the next time Lucas or Leno blocks a defensive end for Dallas, please let me know because it didn't happen during the game today. That was junk. That was absolute junk. You got your quarterback killed. It was it was just garbage. I, I mean, it. and I'm convinced that if Kyle Allen would have played another 10 minutes, he'd have been carted away in an ambulance. Yeah, and Phil, you, you said it. I mean, I've ended at the injuries, but – Heineke, he might have made some uh, bad throws and he had some back heel passes early on, but he was just getting eaten alive back there. And the O-line just was non-existent the entire game. And I, I, I called them out like all September and into October. Then they've had a good stretch run, but that O-line is now even more beat up and what, what, more non-existent. And so – I hate saying good anything good, positive about Dallas, but Micah Parsons might be the best defensive player I've seen play since Lawrence Taylor took off his jersey. I mean, that dude, he was everywhere, and he destroyed us no matter what. I mean, he destroyed everything. He was unreal. Crazy part is we still had a chance to win that game. No, oh, that's true. Well, Dallas helped us out there. Yeah. Uh, Dak, Pre Dak Prescott was trash today. I mean, they shouldn't be celebrating too hard because Dak Prescott was playing out bad. Because if we well, play, if we play ahead, two percent better next game, we we win. We win against Dallas. Dallas that, is going to win the, the NFC East. They'll be the four seed, but this is clearly a weak division, and that's been proven today. Because if that was Dallas winning the division, then it's that Dak's. Did not look good at all. <sighs> Additionally, as Phil's alluded to earlier, Antonio Gibson leads the league in fumbles. So let's talk about this for about 30 seconds. If you're Rivera, do you just bench him at this point? I think he did get benched at that point. Next thing you know, we see number 35 in the game that I didn't even know. I had to look at my sc scorecard and say, oh, yeah, this guy just got activated this week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Gibson, he's going to have to earn his way back on the field because you can't have your uh, running back giving the ball up like he does. And that's what he's doing. 
He might be a great player, or excuse me, he's not great yet. He might be a good player, working towards great, provide some explosiveness, but you can't be giving the ball back to the other team. It's the same way as the quarterback giving the ball up. Can't do it. In my opinion, I think he should be benched, but he's been a workhorse the past few games. And by us benching him, I feel like Jarrett Patterson will come out of his little niche and will show us something and show that we have a reliable running back in him. And, and if, then on the opposite side, did we even blitz once today? Um, oh, I don't think so. We played yeah. this soft zone that Dallas kind of nah, manhandled with short throws and let, let the three receivers run. So they kind of handled it, but, you know, Dak, Dak wasn't at his best. He was giving the ball back to us anyway. He threw two horrible interceptions. So I, I can't exactly say that little crap defense we were running was bad because against the bad quarterback that misses his receivers, hey, you want guys playing zone. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, Phil. <laughs> unfortunately, Phil, for all the wrong reasons, you just sold me on that. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I mean, seriously. We played this soft zone. It was it was so frustrating to sit there and watch guys play 10, 12 yards off a of receiver, but Dak was missing them. Yep. And he threw two horrible interceptions to wide open receivers and he just misses them. If he plays like that, you play that crap zone and just drop back and say, go ahead, throw, because we know you're gonna give us the ball. All right, so let's just end on this. We'll keep this video short for today because there's really not much to talk about in the loss. Well, there's a lot, but we're just – we already know what we're saying. With the schedule remaining, with the rest of the teams in the NFC still doing what they're doing, does Washington make the playoffs? Not win the division, just make the playoffs. Devin. I would say yes because I, I see three – games that we win and we're already six seven seed in the playoffs we win three games that means everyone behind us has to win all their games left to have a chance to make playoffs I feel like we still win playoffs even if we lose next game to Dallas well I unfortunately I'm gonna have to say no simply because we play horribly in New York and we play horribly in Philadelphia I don't remember the last time we've won in those two stadiums where we, we struggle badly. So I see us finishing, and, and we might beat Dallas and Dallas, but, uh, you know, we're at six and seven now. I think we're going to end up being like eight and seven. I mean, not eight and nine, but I've taken a look at some of these other teams that are six and seven. The Falcons, I think they play Tampa, and that's it. They play nothing but junk from the rest of the way. Uh, the Vikings play nothing but jump. Uh, it's and, and San Francisco might have the hardest schedule to finish out the season, but they're playing really good ball. All we have to do is drop one spot, and we're done. So I think you'll see either the Vikings or the Falcons take our spot away from us because they're going to be playing a weak schedule. Or New Orleans. And Yeah. And – Here's my answer to my own question. We need two road wins. Mm -hmm. Two road wins. I don't care where. We have to win three out of the last four. Yes. Yes. And agreed. I don't think we're going to do it. I, I, I think I, we're going to go two and two. I believe we can do it, actually. Well, I mean, Rivera, he gets his teams ready to play. But, you know, honestly, take a look at our roster right now. We Who the, the heck horses? is going to start an offensive line? Uh, the horses is what's I – mean, we just don't have the players. If, if we had even a roster from two weeks ago, Phil, I'd say we could win three out of four. But right now, with all the injuries and, and concussion, I'm sorry. You better just circle 15 days on that one. I mean, unless you magically come back better. The average person is 15 days. So, yep. any final thoughts? Yeah, I got one. Yuck. I thought I was watching Georgia Tech play there for a while. It's horrible. Hey, a hey, special shout-out to a Georgia Tech uh, 
receiver, Demarius Thomas. That was sad and tragic. So here absolutely, at, that's at that's Coach just. Crusoe, we do I saw every that. one of his games that he played in college. He was incredible player. From every, I never met him, unfortunately, but from everything I know, he was a good dude. And uh, I will always remember him as the Tim Tebow catch against Pittsburgh in overtime. He's the only guy that can make Tim Tebow look good in pros. <laughs> Devin, any final thoughts? They better come to play the rest of the season or their season's over. That's simple. All right. Well, this is the Coach and Crew Show. Make sure you subscribe to our videos, like us, and then please also leave your comments and thoughts. Even if you are – oh, and if you're going to zazz us and, and rattle us, you better at least learn how to spell correctly, people. I don't mind you making fun of us and talking trash about us and Washington, but if you're going to do it, you need to at least spell correctly. All right? Grammar police will call you out at minimum. Peace. <laughs>